What a lovely gaff awesome. you have here, Taylor. Thanks for inviting us to your yeah, home. Of course, man. It's a beautiful spot. How long have you been living here? Uh, I've been here for like a little over two years now. Whenever I walk into a house that's this tasteful and feels this lived in, I think like, yes, Rock built this. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Like the yeah. system works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you make good music and you get to live a decent life. It's oh, great. Man. It's you know? not me. It's not me. I don't know. I don't know how it looks like this, but it's not me. It's like, oh, this is like cribs. This, this isn't even your house. No, it's right, not my house. This. Yeah, yeah. I had like a whole a, lot of Gatorade in the fridge, and none of it's <laughs> yours, right? Yeah, this is for sale. So you should, if you like it. <laughs> this is a show home. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. This is all staging furniture, and it was just unlocked this morning. <laughs> you just walked in. This will do nice. Set it up. <laughs> we know that's not true because this is so lived in, um, and there's so much musical equipment around here, and um, it, it just feels like you've spent a lot of time in this house. And uh, we've been talking before cameras rolled. I know this has been really a central hub for this era of the band, for this new album and everything else. Um, so it's nice to be able to sit here and have this conversation with you guys in a place you feel comfortable in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So when you came back, like when you finished the last tour on the self-titled fourth record, which obviously propelled Paramore to a whole other level in terms of reaching audience, mm -hmm. touring, you know, you ended up headlining some of the most prominent festivals in the world at the end of that tour. You won a Grammy. I mean, it's high fives all around when you're in the middle of it. But when you actually got back to Nashville, like what's that decompression experience like? Because life goes on while you're out there doing what you do. Oh, it took, a, uh, I mean, I still feel like, I feel like we've just now come down and, and we're now you're about gearing to go back up. Down yeah, again. yeah. It's but, too funny. <laughs> <laughs> Being in a band, woo! But I mean, it's, it's weird because so much life has happened. I feel like um, this has been the longest break we've taken between albums. Yeah. Even though there was so much time that went, went by between um, Brand New Eyes and Self Titled, we, we did a lot of touring in between, you know. Um, even while we were making the record, we were off doing festivals and stuff. And this, we really just shut down. We, we shut down the whole machine because we needed it. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think in some ways it sort of let out, you know, maybe some demons that, that are easy to, it's just kind of easy when you're in this groove and you're rolling, rolling, rolling. You get whiplash when you stop, you know. You're suppressing those yeah. demons, as you put it. You know, effectively, that arrested development of going out there and getting that adrenaline every yeah. night and being appreciated for what you do. And ultimately, it's narcissism on a stick, you know. Mm. And then you got to come totally. back and take a good look yeah. at who you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. And you've yeah. got to figure out hard, you know, who your friends are. And you go back home and you're with your family and, like, what that dynamic is like when you're, you know, I mean, you're just a kid to them. It doesn't matter if you have your own thing going on. You, you know? talked about shutting down the machine. You know, not a lot of bands at your level, or artists at your level, actually turn it off. Mm -hmm. Like you can turn it down, but it's a business. So yeah, people right. rely on that. And there's, there's a lot of things that go into being a success that a lot of fans probably don't want to know or don't yep. need to know or just simply don't know. And I wondered how hard that is, you know, when you get back and it's like, all right, Paramore is just closed for business for a minute while we go live some life. And, mm -hmm. and how, that, how challenging that actually is to pump the brakes. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> Maybe it's because of social media too, but it is really hard to to um, let yourself disappear for a moment um, if you have the intention of ever coming back. You know, because um, yeah. time just goes by so fast um, on the internet and media. And I quit social media for like two months, three, oh maybe God. even three. You and every other artist I've spoken to recently. This yeah. is a really encouraging thing in a weird way. I've spoken yeah. to so many artists who are like, I just disconnected. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so crucial. Yeah. It's crucial, uh, and I did it kind of before we were busy writing too. So that it kind of, you know, it kind of helped, and you know, life was happening, and some of that was really good, and some of that was very painful, and it was kind of like, I don't need other voices. I need to like, it's hard enough to just figure out what your own voice is. Mm. You know, even I think even if you're not in a band, even if you don't do what we do for a living, you know, I, I think just being in the world with all this information coming at you, it's nice to shield yourself from it for a moment. You know, not in an ignorant way, but just in a maybe Self preservation like, way. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you had to do that in some respects because the record, <clears throat> and we're gonna dive into this now called um, After Laughter, the record is, is this really strange dance between one partner who's this breezy, free sounding music, which is searching for this kind of groove and just like let's let go let go mm -hmm. and then these lyrics which are like i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> yeah. and i wondered you know when that began and how you found your voice and when you started to find your voice that's so loud and honest on this record um well taylor started writing music we were still doing shows for um, self-titled and 
the the first stuff that he was sending me, I was really intimidated by because I, I loved it so much and it was very rhythmic and very different from anything that that w that we had written before. And reflective of what we hear now, in some respects. Yeah, I mean, it was like a there were shades of it for sure. I think he was finding yeah. where what he was most comfortable with and and kind of like just. I don't know, finding the groove. Well, I was only listening to Tame Impala, so <laughs> yeah, I was just was trying happening. to rip off. I was just trying to rip off everything. <laughs> it was so intimidating. Yeah, was, I love was, that you said that, man, because people should absolutely <laughs> own up to that at all times. Yes. Like, I was just listening to Tame Impala, <laughs> trying to do band. bad Tame Impala. That's right? exactly <laughs> what it was. Exactly what it was. I had to try. Yeah. I had to try. I did think it was didn't, cool. Didn't though, work, for but the I record. had to try. Yeah, I just cool for Kevin to Parker, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was kind of like, I was like, oh man, we're really, we're really gonna, we're gonna move away from wherever we are right now. It's and your gut was turning about that? And yeah, and I was nervous because part of me didn't, every time we do a record, I, th I think this happens where I get so married to like who we are in that moment that I'm scared for us to like go be something else because what if, what if we're not as good at that or something? I don't know, I just have all these little fears that kind of swirl. And um, you know, and then we came home and there was like a, a very quick lull that happened and he was already sort of, he was already ready again to, to write. And it just, <coughs> it was like, it was like touch and go for a while. And, and the more that he, the more he would write and the more things were coming out of him, I think that confidence built a little bit more. And, you know, it just took me a long time to verbalize some of the things I was going through. I had to do it in really elementary ways at first. And that made me feel like maybe I wasn't a great writer. You know, you have lyrics on the record that are just so A, B, A, B. Um, and then you have other ones that, that, um, that are gut wrenching, you know, for me. Mm. Um, but I think that all of that was necessary to learn how to fit myself into this new world because that this is the musically that's the world that I envision myself living in as a as a person. Even we, it's like it's it's a fun it's a fun one, and and we want we want to feel like that. I think a lot of people want to feel like that. But I think it's I think I think pop music. I think vulnerability is an underrated aspect of pop music. Mm. I think people feel that pop music is this just out and out, confident, like Party. veneer. Yeah. And actually pop music and saying something within that framework mm -hmm. is, is a very vulnerable place. It's, I think it's, yeah. it's easier to bury yourself under layers of sound. Yeah, yeah. Because there are layers on this record, but every one of them is discernible. Mm. I can hear the guitar relating to the percussion, relating to the bass, relating to, and it's, in that sense, there's a lot of space for you to move within, and yeah. I can imagine that must have been quite nerve-wracking. It really was. I, I mean, I tell everyone, I, the first day I got in Taylor's car to go, we were going somewhere before we were gonna write, and he was listening to, I don't know what you were listening to, like Fela Kuti, or I don't know what you were listening yeah, to. Yeah, I think like Thomas Mob Fumo. Okay, he was listening to just some crazy, and, and just lots of, lots of um, rhythm, which I love, that's what, I, that's what helps me write. Yeah. most yeah I was just kind of like wow how am I gonna fit everything I, I feel into these pockets you know into into this rhythm and how am I gonna do that in a way that makes me proud because I was already so psyched about what he was making yeah. you know what I was yeah. hearing I just wanted to do it justice and honor it yeah that's a challenge it is it's a challenge when you overthink things <laughs> yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong but I think you guys overthink a lot of things. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we really do. <coughs> like, how did he nail us within minutes? It's all on the record, man. Yeah. You know, you can mm -hmm. hear it. And, and I think that um, it's clear when you hear your records that it means that much to you at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think getting anything finished when you're in that headspace is a miracle. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you could just get lost in that yeah. process. So you need someone to help you do that. And once again, you teamed up with an absolute savage, this guy, Justin, Justin Mendel Johnson, yeah. who as a musician is one of the most talented of his generation. Mm -hmm. As a producer has now sparked that whole part of his life as well. Yeah. As someone with hair, he just continues to inspire on every <laughs> single level. <laughs> but it sounds like Paramore produced this record with him. Taylor did, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah we, you know, I think at the, at the beginning, you know, when we when the end of this record, it was just Haley and I, um, and it was kind of this, uh, <laughs> you know, trying for us to try to like realize, okay, I guess Paramore is a two-person rock band, and that was wow. a hard Sounds yeah at great. the point, and it was a hard thing for us to kind of wrap our heads around, and and um, and I so I think we were like, man, how do we make this to where we can get into the room with people that that know us? There's some like there's some comfort like. There's some um, some voices and some like influence outside of us that can elevate this, and we're like, well, yeah. Zach, mm -hmm. and uh, and JMJ, you know, because he 
you know, he is like, yeah, the most insane bass player. And yeah. we just mm -hmm. had done our last record with him. So we knew that we already had some like rapport. And um, yeah, so it was a really, it was a really cool thing. And it felt that way, like when we got into pre-production, I saw finally playing these songs. Cause it's, it was at that point, just me behind my computer, yeah. trying to going write crazy. everyone's parts. Basically and, going insane. Right, yeah. Totally, and it was really cool to like, to just play guitar and for Haley to just sing and then like let Zach and JMJ like, do what they do and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, fill that space. And um, yeah, so it was, it, it just, it was, we definitely wanted to have way more of a hand in this record. And um, I think we just had a, we had a vision for this record, but we also always know that we need help. You know, like I, I think. What's one of the things I love about Paramore is that <clears throat> through all of these, uh, you know, misjudged assessments over the course of the difficulties you've been through, that it's like it's Haley's band or it's this or mm. it's that, you've always seemed to me to strive for a community. Mm. Yeah. That you wanted to be in a gang. Mm -hmm. yeah. That you wanted to be a group of people because that's strength in numbers in some respects. Yep. Mm. You know, and I think that that's, that's evident on this record, and it's also evident with Zach coming back into the band, mm -hmm. which was just like, I mean, there's not enough romance in this day and age. The way that things move so fast with music, it's like put out a press release or chuck out a tweet or chuck out an Instagram, move yeah. on. And what I loved when it was actually announced was like the t-shirt the and the photo. And it <laughs> yeah. felt like you guys were like high-fiving in the room when you clicked that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. We definitely did. It felt like that. that too much. <laughs> no, we didn't overthink. That was the one thing we didn't overthink. There's a lot of things. <laughs> in our entire overthink. career. <laughs> so to get back to a situation like six years on or whatever it is where how does that happen? And I, and I want, I want the... I want, to, I want the t-shirt, the next step from the t-shirt. Like, okay, mm -hmm. yay, he's back in the band. I want you to, to, to make us feel the way the t-shirt made us feel when you got back in the band, right? Like first day that you got that call or you've been hanging out already or what's the, set the scene? Um, man, it was a long time before the t-shirt came out. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, I mean, honestly, it was Taylor and I met when we were both like 12. You know, he's been my best friend since He's been my longest best friend mm. in my life, and mm. my own, like one of my, he is my best friend. So, I, uh, you know, I, I definitely, after I quit the band in 2010, just to be, you know, just tired of touring, and you know, had we'd been doing shows since I was 13, and you're 14, 15, and it was that it was like you needed to get off that yeah, life. Yeah, I was just because the perception was brothers stick together. There's elements of that, but I'm also like my own person, you know, so, of um, but yeah, also being Italian is like, you, you do stick together, <laughs> family. Um, Big but, ziti. <laughs> marinara sauce, pizza, <laughs> um, the list goes on, but yeah, Taylor was, you know, just this, this rock in my life that I didn't have anymore, you know, and I, like I was telling you earlier, I like moved to New Zealand for a couple years, yeah. I was like, I was like searching for my life and it was like, I was stoked about it the whole way and it yeah. was like so huge and I came home and um, started putting pieces of my life here back together mm -hmm. and Taylor was like one of the most, and Haley now, but Taylor then was like the biggest thing that I was like, I just don't have that and he reached out to me and um, I was like, all right, let's hang out and then we took a drive one day and we just like got it all out there. Beautiful. And then. Well, I was like, hey, man, we're in this weird part of town. Let's just turn around and go home. So we didn't end up going anyway. We just, like, drove. And then um, fast forward a couple months, and he's like, would you ever, like, want to play drums on our record? Had you been secretly harboring a desire in some respects to get back and play music <sighs> yeah, again? No. Oh, yeah, totally. I was like, if they, because we were getting closer, but it, they had somebody playing with them. I yeah, thought it was pretty serious. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I always thought it'd be rad, but I didn't know. You know, I'd had dreams about it of me like them calling me and be like, "Hurry up, we need you!" And I'd be like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> um, and then I'd like, so I, I deep down, yeah. like, subconsciously and consciously, but just kind of let it happen. You know, just like smart. And um, so he, man, he just asked me if I wanted to, and I was like, "Of course, I would love to." Is that cool with Haley? And he was like, "Of course." So within the first month of recording the record, Taylor just walks outside and he's like, hey man, do you want to join our band again? Oh man, how'd you feel? <laughs> I was like, because I'm a realistic person, yeah, I was like, course. just a tour or two? Like, what do you want me to do? Because I'm just playing drums on the record. I wasn't in the band. And you've you got, you got to protect yourself at this point too. Yeah, a little. it's been a journey to get there. Yeah. Man. I was like, hell Human yeah. nature's like, wait, yeah. what are you saying here? Yeah, right. yeah. I was like, well, of course I would love to, but, um, 
You know, it was, a, it was a hard time, though, man, like when yeah. in 2010, and I know for them, I can't speak for you guys, but we're so close now, I know a lot of the details, but for me, it was like this thing where I had this moment after leaving the band that I was like walking to my mailbox, and I was like, I had like no identity anymore. I was just a person. And it was this kind of freeing thing, but this kind of, the thing that I kind of thought I wanted, but it was this really uncomfortable feeling. Mm. Not that I like really, well, I'm not that I care about fame or, or being in a cool band or I've never cared about that in my whole life, but it was just like something we did. This is yeah. our occupation and we live and breathe music. So I was like, I don't have that anymore. And so, man, when he, when he asked that, I was just like, I was taken aback because I was, you know, just so thankful and, and, and just like didn't expect that. And, um, I, but I, it was also on the flip side of that, it was like a really heavy decision in the first place that, that I left. Mm -hmm. So it was even just a rad thing that we were even hanging out and I was being able to play on the record. I wanted to make a really smart and, and uh, adult decision about it. So I, I took a week. I well, already knew that I wanted to do it, but it was like. Yeah, but the friend, the, you, you, when you just get your friendship back, you don't want to sacrifice that by mm. going over old hat, getting back into yeah, old right. habits. Totally. I, I wanted right. to see what the, exactly. And, and man, it's like the band's like, because I knew it then when we talked to you on the couch. Mm. I knew it when we first started. I know it now. It's like mm. um, I obviously missed the, the six years I was out of it. But like I, I've seen a lot of this. There's only one record I didn't play on. It was self-titled. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like I saw a lot of it. And, and the thing that drew me back the most and the yes, the most immediate yes was getting to spend time with Haley and Taylor every yeah, day. Man. And, and simultaneously, let's just, let's just focus on Paramore as a dynamic. I mean, aesthetically, we need to acknowledge that there'd been another shift in the personnel of the yeah. band. And mm -hmm. so ultimately, you were probably looking for some, some reinvestment in friendship yourselves in some respect. Yeah, like at a certain point, I mean, I just felt like we'd been through, like how much more can you really go through? I know that people don't always keep, you know, the same friends throughout their entire life, but I always thought I would. Mm -hmm. And I met Zach and Taylor at such a young, I mean, we, we hung out all the time. We were kids. Mm. It's before anyone knew our names and before we were, people knew us as Paramore or any of that. Mm. So um, I was just kind of like, I mean, I didn't have Zach in my life anymore. And, um, and I, you know, never mind Paramore at all. I just, I didn't know him anymore. And, and that made me sad all the time. Mm. But it made me so happy that Taylor and Zach had reconciled. And I just, mm. for whatever reason, I, I stayed back from that for, until we started to play music again together. But when, you know, like when you start to lose friends, you lose a part of yourself, you lose these memories that you don't really, it's like you're not allowed to have them anymore for some reason and, and, uh, and it's painful. And, uh, and you know, we're still going through that because obviously, like you said, there has been another shift and, it, and, that, and that's okay. I think what is actually harder is just kind of the life stuff that you have to go through and the things you have to really, um, wrap your head around. I have one more question to ask you yeah. about this, Zach. You know, it's a heartfelt one, you know. Yeah. Um, how does Josh feel about that? Is he proud, is he happy for you? Is he pleased that you're able to go and do what you love to do? And Yeah, man, I mean, it's like, it's, it's definitely like um, an interesting situation just because like we both started playing mm. together and then mm. we left together and now I'm the only brother back. And mm. so obviously it's like, and it's like another thing we're just used to. It's just like yeah. we haven't had the opportunity to just keep some things oh, mysterious. Man. But it's like, you know what? He's, he's, an, he's an awesome brother, and he's, he's been so encouraging to me. I, I sat him down. We had lunch, and he was like, uh, I was like, so, you know, I've been playing on the record, and they asked me to be, be back in the band. He was like, oh, I thought they already did. Like, I like, kind of just thought, I figured that would happen. <laughs> mm. And he was like, I'm stuck for you, man. And he's like, you know, you... You're, you're my favorite drummer and you need to be playing drums. And so <laughs> that's great. It was like a really encouraging thing. Obviously, it's not, you know, it's not like back to normal and he's not in the band. So, you know, it's like, yeah. it's not like, uh, it's not like it's all how it used to be. But that's the cool thing about life is nothing can, is. Yeah. And that's something that I think you guys seem to be acknowledging at this point mm -hmm. that through the, through the, you know, the great and man, you've had great. Mm. And you continue to have great. I mean, Paramore is great, right? It's a great life. Yeah. But then, you know, it seems to come with this disruption that seems to just get attached to this. It's just, you know, sometimes, it, and it just feels like, you know, okay, this, this is the energy yeah. that mm. comes and goes. Mm. That's just what it is. Is that kind of, have you, have you somehow come to a point of peace with that? Yeah, I mean, I think it just makes you fight harder 
for something that you love, you know, it mm -hmm. kind of shows you what it's worth to you. And you either walk away from it and or you keep, you know, you just keep your head down and you bulldoze through those things. Sometimes you don't bulldoze through them. Sometimes you kind of suffer through them. Yeah. But that's when it's good to have friends mm -hmm. around, you know. You seem to be able to, um, <clears throat> I, whenever something like this occurs or whenever it, it's around a time when there's, a, there's, you know, there's music in the air and I think that it always comes out, you seem to come out fighting. You obviously have this streak in you, which is just like, my voice will mm. propel me out of this. Dude, I... But I don't know if, is that the reality? No, I right. wish I could mm. could say that was uh, the case with this record. And I, I do feel like, you know, you listen to like Brand New Eyes and I yell throughout the entire... Yeah. But I, I wish I could take credit for fighting through um, things uh, bravely with this. But I, and I mean, just go ahead and hate me for pointing at you for the next 60 seconds, but I was kind of flatlined, and um, and I think that if it weren't for Taylor, the band would be over. That is mm. just kind of where, like, the You'd truth. had enough. You checked Yeah, it. I had enough. I'm, I'm tired need of this losing anymore. friends, yeah, or yeah. Tired, of, I'm tired, tired of, like, you know, doubting myself, and maybe if I just don't even if I'm not doing it at all, then I won't have anything to doubt. You know, I'll just see like what the, else I can You know do. what comes along for the ride for you, which is eternally frustrating, I think, certainly for people who are fans of your band, is that everyone suddenly turns yeah. in your direction and goes, yeah. well, she's this cold, hard business <laughs> lady it and she's true. just pulling these strings and <laughs> she sits at home with like her glasses on doing the numbers <laughs> and just going, yeah, cut them <clears> out. <throat> and you had this chance back in 2010 yeah. You could have if you really wanted to, no disrespect. But you know, either with Taylor or without, you could have gone, okay, cool, if that's how it is, I'm gonna be a solo artist. But you seem to yeah. want to always come back. I, I think it, it's funny, because everyone does want to focus on, you know, what, whether it's about being a girl or being the singer, you know, it's like this great thing, great orange hope or whatever the hell, you know, people say. And then all of a sudden when bad John stuff Mayer happens. Was just, John Mayer was literally just throwing that out as a joke. I mean, he was. Yeah. And it did become a thing. And then but it doesn't help that you actually have a company called Good Die Young, which by the way, <laughs> deserves an absolute oh, high five. That's like you. the greatest company thank name you. ever for his yeah. eye. Of the, yeah. well, I actually laughed out loud when I saw that. But, but so it's cool. just it's like, as soon as bad stuff hits, then, then you know, that thing that's been out there on this pedestal becomes the thing to, to becomes the target. And, and I don't, I just, the, the most important thing for me is just not to put, paint myself in a victim kind of light. Yeah. But I will say I just kind of was done because I was done. I, my heart was tired and, and Taylor told me, you know, uh, we went to coffee one day and um, he was like, I am your friend and I will be your friend if Paramore is a thing and if it's not a thing, if you want to write music, then we'll write music. It doesn't even have to be for it. No one could ever hear it. Like you just tell me and I'll, I'm gonna support you. And mm. that, like having choice, having mm. options, you know, it's, it's up to me, ultimately. It's not up to someone reading a blog or writing a blog or, you know, uh, it's not up to anyone. And that was, I think, the first step to me kind of seeing a little bit of that light at the end of the tunnel, you know? And then and from that point on, he and I, whether we were going through anything personally or whatever, it just it just shifted the tone of or the foundation. I think a little bit. There was a lot it more. It took some empathy. of the pressure off your. Yeah. Because it's all. It just always seemed to land on you. And I just think like when I listen to self-titled, I hear you, mm. <laughs> and you, mm. and and Jeremy or whatever. But I don't just hear the pa the Haley Williams show. Mm. You know, I, I feel very much, and I think that's very evident in this album. The guitar sounds, the rhythm, the groove. Oh yeah. So much of this sound is is you know clearly the, about the chemistry that you have as a band. Mm, um, mm -hmm. Did Haley come out and say that flat out to you? Like I think I'm done. Was it that cut and dry? Um, no, because she's so nice. I think, <laughs> I think I think that that's that's a hundred percent what she wanted to say. Yeah. But she, mm. you know, she uh, is so like viciously loyal mm. that you know she didn't want to let me down. You know, so it was kind of mm. that. I kind of had to pull it out of her a little bit, you know, um, and and kind of I know that because there's so many times I've wanted to quit this band, mm -hmm. and so I could just kind of like tell, you know, yeah. and I think we like, you know, to be young and and to have at that at that point been doing it for so long, you know, I think we were just like, man, if this isn't like, why are we why are we doing this, mm -hmm. like why, you know, are we doing this because we're supposed to? Are we doing this to make money? Are we doing this? Um, 
to prove some sort of point. And, you know, I think, I was just like, man, if, if we don't want to be here, if you don't want to be here, if, if we're not passionate about this, there is no point. Mm. You know, there's just everything that follows this, this record would be made in vain. And, and everything that follows that, it's like, yeah. it just sounds like I, I don't really want to be a part of it either. I can stand in front of anyone and say that there's so much peace now. You know, mm. we run into each other around town and all that. And, mm. and, and it's so nice to find that. I mean, Taylor and I actually got to experience that moment together because we were at the coffee shop talking. like I, About whether we were going to stay in this band or not. When we saw Josh. And, no way. Yeah. Oh, and at it, that time. Yeah. Yeah. It was a that. crazy. Kismet. It, yeah. It's just the way that things go. And, and um, you know, we, we got to, I think you rarely get to experience real um, full circle redemption um, in your lifetime, uh, mm. but you know, on your own, like in your own kind of solitude. But I think to be able to share that moment, me, you know, with Taylor and this thing that happened that really affected both of our lives and affected Zach's life too, and kind of have closure was so it's great. Huge, yeah. yeah, it was really beautiful. And oh, that's an amazing. Um, yeah. I'm not even going to use the word coincidence. Mm. Yeah, right. You, you can't. You can't oh, yeah. use that. Wild, yeah. But with that comes freedom, right? With that acknowledgement yeah. comes freedom. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. Strange how that works. Yeah. And from that freedom comes this record, which says a lot. It says a lot. And, and the opening statement on the record, hard times with an opening lyric that says, all I want is to wake up fine, tell me that I'm all right and I'm not going to die. So basically we're straight in the deep end here on the reality of living life and it's not about painting a picture this is the ride we're on this is going to be an honest record and i'm going to tell you exactly how it is so i'm going to ask you the question and i'm going to preface it by acknowledging that i absolutely you know have have, have anxiety issues and mm. have been depressed and when i say that because i'm going to ask you is that something that you suffer from now yeah three years ago no it kind of i think it was kind of I don't know what happened, <laughs> but now, yeah, mm. for sure. Mm. And I think that it gave me um, empathy for friends who struggle with it. I know Ta like Taylor on the road, we both have like had such difficult times um, even verbalizing how we feel about just mm. life. Um, this, the roller coaster of touring and being in a band in general and being public, um, uh, it gave me a lot of compassion that I didn't have before. Because before I was very much like a, one of those people that was just like, Everything's fine. We're good, right? Everything's great. Everything's great. Well, maybe you had did. Maybe it was there. And yeah. You go and you form a band as a teenager, and it's just <laughs> yes. like we're gonna just cement over this for a while, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. And then you. And is it any coincidence that about three years ago you sort of like started to decide you want to yep. switch it down, and it all comes up? And it all comes back. I mean, yeah. And we're just going through a lot, going through life. But being an adult now, like, you can't hide behind, mm. you know, no responsibilities or whatever. You know, it's just all yours. And it's all on, on your plate. And, um, mm. you know, I, that was hard to reckon with. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely, I'm, I'm, I don't feel like, as of right now, today, um, and, you know, the, the general sense, I don't feel as dark as I did when we were making the record, but I absolutely am not over stuff that we've written about in these songs, you know, yeah. and, and that's weird. Normally we write a record in hindsight, kind of, you know, and I feel like I'm still living out some of our songs from After Laughter in real time, and I'll probably be, I don't know, maybe it'll be good to perform them, because maybe then it will give me, I'll be so. looking at them from a different, you know, place. I think so, I think it's all part of the process. Yeah. Um, you can hear it definitely in the lyrics, and that's what's fascinating. You know, uh, focusing musically just for a second, straight away we're into this like, this tone of what this record's going to provide mm. for us. And I'm so glad you kept it. We, what inspired that? Because on song number one, I'm hearing Duran Duran. I'm hearing at times I'm hearing Johnny Marr. I'm hearing all sorts of <laughs> Talking Heads, all these crazy mm. yeah. guitar type influences. I mean, in your own words, part of that was intentional. You know, like I, I didn't. Uh, I feel like you know when I started writing after. Uh, you know, Josh and Zach left, you know, because Josh was like the main writer. And yeah. basically out of just necessity, no one asked me to do anything. I just started locking myself away and writing songs. But there was such a like, in my head, you know, I'm just like, okay, here's this like, this thing that, that they've created. Um, now what can it, I do with it? Yeah, and like, and how do I keep, how do I try and help keep this going? And I think, you know, my first instinct was like, well, I'll just do what they did. I'll try to write you know songs the way that Josh wrote songs and I remember like when I went to LA to to write with Haley I, I had like 20 ideas to show her 
and most of them were just like power or riff yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. things. And, and you know, she's just like trying to be really nice and was like, oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> do, you have, do you have anything else? You know, and it was like, it wasn't until I was all out of ideas and, and when I set up my, um, my little rig, I mean, my speakers were on water bottles. I was like just trying to like <laughs> yeah. make this makeshift thing. I did this really quick thing on this marimba sound. Um, and in my head, it was gonna be this totally different thing just that I was gonna mess with on, on my own. And that turned out to be Ain't It Fun. It was this thing that I didn't think she'd like mm. that I just selfishly liked. And that whole record was a process of, I think, me being comfortable with my voice and, and then her also just like getting used to something different. And so and this time record, with freedom, probably yeah. getting away from what was. It was liberating. Yeah. It was, you know, totally. and it worked. I mean, Ain't It Fun was a game changing record. That's the, that's, I mean, you had, you were in the pop cyclone. I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> it's fine yeah. to go in like headline arenas and you build your body of work over time. But when you have one song that jumps above your catalog like that, and how was that experience just, just to kind of sidebar for a second? Mm -hmm. Cause it seems to have informed this record. Like mm -hmm. you haven't buried it. You haven't gone like, oh, we did that. We need to go back to something else. It's like, no, we need to run with this. Well, I don't, I mean, we didn't really intend on it. Cause we, we never wanted to make, we never really set out to make a pop record with self-titled at all. I mean, I don't think, you listen to other songs on the, on the album and they're not, I mean, part two is like yeah. one of the heavier things we've ever done. And, um, you know, it's it's strange that it happened because we just loved it. We, we were in that hotel room that night joking, doing like doing our own version of the gospel choir, like demoing that out and sending it. I remember sending it to our A&R guy, Steve-O, and being like, I don't know what this is. We did this in like 30 minutes. He um, listened to it and he went, I know exactly what this is. <laughs> so, so, but if anything, maybe it just gave us a little bit of courage, you know, to, you know, that we can do just yeah. whatever we feel like doing because that's what we should be doing anyway mm -hmm. with our music. I mean, really, um, we would be doing that regardless of if there were windows and people could look in or not. I think th that's what kind of fuels us. And this is where we were because like we said earlier, we didn't really know if we were gonna get to album making like, ever again. Like we really just felt like, well, let's just put one foot in front of the other and start writing. So and, yeah, and I mean, It's funny because <clears throat> when you hear hard times, it just sounds like, it sounds so effortless. Mm. And I'm sure it wasn't, but oh, it does. Gosh, no. Um, and what I really like as well is that you, you're sort of serving the purpose of the song in a different way. You're going into different, we joked about this watching footage of the documentary, you go into different voices because mm. you're like, it needs to sound like this rather than like me. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because yeah. now you're really subverting and really playing with pop mm -hmm. music and really having fun mm -hmm. with this, right? Yeah. But the song itself is going to be the first record. It right? is. Hard Times going to be the first thing anybody <laughs> yeah. hears. Like that is a really brilliant bold step and also lyrically to state that. I mean, how do you pick one song? Because all the songs to me deserve a moment. Why that one? That was a few car rides of talking. Haley's always been right at predicting things. Uh -huh. And so we really just like we're leaning on Haley's decision like for the first single. And she, you were just like this voice of reason after we had all these confusing car rides with people and different opinions and, and things. But when we like put out Riot, like I remember it's like an earliest memory of like a good business decision. It's probably my first one. And Haley was like, it's gotta be misery business. Mm -hmm. And that song was like, took us to the next changed level. Yeah, it changed our musical <laughs> yeah. life. And so from then I was just like, yo, like we can have opinions and my opinion is, what does Haley think? Just because the whole way we're like putting this record out, everything is just like, we all contribute and you, especially Taylor, but like. Well, yeah, Zach's, just, Zach's super emotional. I'm super like ultra way too logical and Haley somehow has got this bridge and like middle. this crazy gut mm. instinct. So that we basically just like, it's not like she always listens to us. It's not this whole like, she makes the call, but it's, it is a cool, like, she's able to kind of decipher what we're both saying. Mm -hmm. Me and Zach kind of sometimes argue like brothers where we're actually saying the same thing, but yeah. for some reason we think we're not. Yeah. And I think yeah. she can kind of come through. We waste like, a lot of time. It's nice. It's, it's a treat. Yeah. It's called best friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it actually is. It really is. It's pretty actually much is. a life constant. I just cut it my is. best friendship off. Sorry. It's done like that? Oh, wow. You so, guys just got back together and so it's it? It's done like that? Yeah. Wow. No, this, no, this wasn't honey. the exclusive I was predicting, but we'll take it. We'll take it. No, so. I just meant I cut him off, but I said friendship. No, I, I, no, I got it. I just turned it into something way bigger. Than <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's sneaky. how you guys That's do how this. I roll. That is so used to it, we didn't even notice. sheep's clothing, right? <laughs> We're so used to it, aren't we? Didn't even phase me. No. So used to it. Didn't even phase me. I got it. But that's um, what I wanted to say is that we believe in... in 
hard times, you know, and I yeah. think for this new record, it's like we want we wanted to come out with like a head turner. We started showing people the record, you know, we started for the first time getting outside opinions, which really threw us off. And so we were like, oh, oh okay, maybe not. Yeah, maybe right. this isn't smart. Really, what was the worst? What was the worst thing somebody said about it that really kind of really you remember that was like, wow, you don't get this record at all? So normally like when you like ask someone and they go, uh, you know, did you hear it? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's good. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, oh man, you hated it. Yeah. You hated yeah. it. But at the end of it, but you know what it sounds to me like you double down on it. Because that's the thing. It's like, all right, man, you know, we're just gonna we're gonna press all the buttons here. Yeah. And when it gets into that dirt, 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 you know, it's like, oh you must have just been laughing. Oh, that's Taylor, by the way. No, you? no one would so know fun. that. But we we I didn't did even promise know that. we really? promised that he would sing on this record. We right. promised like fans at shows right. that he would. So that's amazing. Yeah. So congrats. Do you have, I mean, outside, when you're not pretending to be in Flock of Seagulls or on a vocoder, <laughs> do you have a good singing voice? No, 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 she'll, he, they'll, he they'll does. both say, Like I an don't. angel, can you hear that? It is I a little I angelic, the voice of an angel yeah. Just then. Yeah. Uh, I don't. He was the first backup singer in Paramore. That is true, before my I voice mean, he dropped. Played I was guitar just screaming, well, though, to be fair, back in the no, day. No, 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 high harmony. No, I was, my voice was, like, high I, harmony. I would call my friends, you know, be like, you know, like, hey, is Zach there? <laughs> And like, and you know, I'm just, you know, I'm 12 and I'm just like living my life and it's fine. And then, you know, someone's like, hey Zach, there's a girl on the phone for you. <laughs>